Hello everyone and welcome to our last STEMtastic session of this fine Wednesday. We are joined by Sam. Um, he's going to talk to you today about esports, um, how to get into a career in it and answer any questions that you might have. Um, so very brief introduction from me, but handing straight over to Sam to look after you all today. Great, thank you very much. Yep, so um, my name's Sam Rawlings and um, obviously esports a big passion of mine. Um, I'll pretty much just start off kind of where my background came from, how I got involved, uh, and then kind of go more into the careers and opportunities, just so you can kind of get an idea of originally where I've come from and, you know, the kind of process I've had of getting into it. So um, I initially found my own esports organization, uh, Click Esports, back in 2016. Um, this was kind of a passion project. Uh, I've always been interested in playing games since I was maybe, you know, three years old. Um, just playing against my parents, you know, playing against my dad, that type of thing. Um, always grew up on games. And, you know, I'd never really, obviously, at that point, esports was still very small. Um, it was more of a thing maybe in Korea uh, or China where people were starting to play real-time strategy games on a computer. There wasn't so much anything on the console. It's still very much, you know, in its grassroots. Um, I was always very competitive when it came to that and, you know, I played a lot of sports, but at the end of the day, you know, I, I always came back to the game and it's easily accessible. And I'm sure, you know, during the pandemic and lockdown that most people have been playing games instead, but they haven't had that opportunity. So it's a good way to kind of keep that competitiveness about you. Um, I started to realize I wasn't really skilled enough to kind of make it in that myself. Um, I did try my best, but, you know, I, I really did love the kind of game inside. So uh, I really wanted to get involved in some way, uh, you know, kind of watching the competitive gamers and watching people who stream and people making millions, you know, such as Ninja, who obviously many of you may know, um, makes millions upon millions playing Fortnite every day. So um, it actually came to us going to Wembley Arena to watch the League of Legends quarterfinals. And with that, we I was just so blown away by a packed stadium full of fans, you know, not not supporting a football team, a basketball team, rugby team, but there for esports. Uh, I mean, it was literally completely full and it was the same kind of atmosphere I'd, I'd experienced at, at football games. Uh, and from that moment, I was like, right, need to get involved in this. And we went home and straight away started up our own esports organization. Um, like many, uh, finding your own esports org, um, they created, you know, just from your bedroom, from your own computer. And it's it's very similar to other startups and people starting their own businesses. Um, you know, you do it out of passion, out of that long-term vision. Um, so pretty much all my spare time has been doing that at Click. Um, managed to find a partner in MSI, who are a major company that do peripherals, gaming monitors. And since then, you know, very recently, we've been competing at the top level across multiple games. Um, most recently, our biggest accomplishments were playing a major in Apex, where we flew out to Poland. Uh, we did fly out to Texas, but that one was cancelled due to the pandemic, unfortunately. Um, so we're competing across major titles now. You know, we've, we've have competed in Fortnite, Rocket League, FIFA, CSGO, all the big ones. And then um, very recently, I joined Adaplay, who uh, are focused on creating a safe and inclusive environment for UK schools to compete. Um, that's all about UK tournaments, uh, very similar to the British Esports Organization. We want to kind of create that grassroots level and kind of nourish it into um, a set league where students can compete weekly for, for prizes, you know, kind of become the next esports superstar of tomorrow um, and kind of go about it the right way with the right environment and the right, you know, instructors, uh, coaches, everything possible so that's what i'm currently doing at the moment i, I own an esports organization and i'm working with out play to bring uk to uh, esports to uk schools so that's quite a, quite a bit of a long background about myself um but i'll kind of talk just briefly now about like the the industry um so esports is valued at just over 950 million pounds or dollars um gaming as a whole is 80 billion uh, you can imagine obviously that's a lot of money we're talking about the same as kind of like you know on the lines of uh film and, and music um so you know it's it's a very expansive industry with a lot of money and there are a lot of opportunities to get in there um the most obvious one that you're probably aware of is becoming a professional player yourself um 
that this is just basically through dedication, training, talent, um, all of the above. You know, I'm sure people who play games, you've you've you know, you said told me you think, you know, I'm pretty good at this. I, I could probably go pro. Um, you know, why not? You know, commit to it and see how good you are. If you feel like you are good, um, you know, let people know. Try to enter competitions. There's plenty to enter for free. Uh, and that's the best way of getting picked up as a player. Being a player is probably the hardest thing to do uh, because it's so little amount of people that get picked up. But if you have the natural talent, you play a lot and you think you can get there, then, you know, go for it. Um, players on general, they mostly earn slightly under 7 million in prize money. It's the, the most earned from a player. Uh, the most recent tournament for Dota, which is the has the most prize pool of any esports tournament and uh, that had a 40 million dollar prize pool so players you know they are kind of the superstars they are for football like the messi and cristiano ronaldo this, this is kind of the equivalent it's, it's the big time players who earn, earn the big bucks um is esports kind of went on it's it's not just you know people competing in the bedroom people go to um training grounds and uh, anything such as uh, boot camps, etc., and it's it's went from kind of playing to win money to becoming an employee, essentially, uh, of a of a major organization such as my own. Uh, well, not so major, but you know, like an organization. Um, these contracts are probably about one thousand to five thousand dollars per month. Uh, the top athletes earn around fifteen thousand per month, so you know it's it's not quite at the level of a football athlete or something like that but it is you know there is a lot of money to be earned regularly uh just from being a competitor um so a lot of people may be worried that when playing any sports you know it, it's a limited time career it's kind of the end um once you're all packed up and you don't have the ability anymore um it's definitely not the case i mean uh carlos rodriguez who is a professional prof- professional player uh, gone organization owner um, he wasn't that successful when it came to competing uh, he had a, quite a good name for himself but he thought you know I'm not quite at that good level uh, so with what he knew about esports he said I'm going to start my own organization he started his own brand called G2 uh, a lot of people who are into esports probably know about G2 they're one of the most successful organizations of the past few years um, they were only founded in 2015 and now they've got 1.1 million Twitter followers and many you know worldwide wins and they've established themselves as a big organization with a lot of talent so he's doing very well for himself now not just because he's he's had that ability as a player but he's taken what he knows about esports and he started his own organization with it so we've talked a lot about kind of being a player um and i'm sure like i said that's probably the most obvious one to everyone uh another interesting one is being a coach or analyst um but a lot of people who know a lot about esports and do compete, but again, don't feel like they're at that level professionally. Uh, there is an option to be a coach or analyst. That's how I started my career. Um, it's it's as simple as just looking at the game from a different perspective, and you know, kind of focusing on the ways in which you can um, develop that. So, and we have actually got so, uh, a coach at West Suffolk studying at West Suffolk at the moment who coaches in America. So they're a student at West Suffolk coaching Fortnite to a team in America. So oh, right. that is one of the roles that we are training up for in the esports course that we've got. So the roles that we generally teach for are the professional players, the coaching, the shoutcasters, the yeah. analysts and the journalists, um, and that kind of social media management and streaming and influencing. Mm-hmm. We have a very popular influencer that we have as well that's a student it's doing really well and then we do all the video editing and the community management mm-hmm. so, um, we even do a lot of the refereeing as well so we are we've got it's got such a range of there's such a range of careers in in the esports industry it's not people sometimes think that it's such a narrow thing to come and train or learn but actually it gives you a lot of transferable skills throughout the for, for your next step there's a lot of leadership, a lot of communication and teamwork. Strategy, strategy is a massive thing. So it can just help you with your problem solving. And then you've got all your cyber skills and your dexterity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 
um th- like i said th- there is a, a, so many opportunities as you have said yourself um some of the ones i was i was going to go into and can do now which is about you know about being a digital artist and designer you know it, it's the type of thing with esports is that it's so open and kind of broad um pretty much anyone from any background or any experience or skill can get involved um it, it's not so much like other industries where you have to have a certain profession um you know if you've got something you're good at and something you you can excel with um you know like being a digital artist designer uh, inclusive community as well isn't it very yeah inclusive yeah community. very much so very yeah. open-minded very inclusive very um very actually quite caring all right sometimes there's bravado during matches but actually the players actually do look after each other a lot yeah yeah it's definitely the case i mean you will find that you know it's it is an industry based upon helping each other and everyone trying to get involved in some way so re- regardless of what you're questions on the chat as well lots of questions i mean i'm more happy to answer some questions now i mean i expect there'll be quite a lot of questions so yeah so basically we've covered careers and salaries they're looking at typical salaries mm-hmm. for the different roles you can get from doing an esports course well that's a massive amount of, of range mm-hmm. uh, you'll know yourself the salaries can be very variable and then we've got one here. Do you do geometry geometry dash? Geometry dash, not as an esports. I know I know the game, but um, we, we don't do it ourselves in click or without a play. Someone's asking, what kind of chair do you have, and how and what kind of how does that increase your abilities? <laughs> so <laughs> I know I know I know it's a bit of a gag that the, the better gaming chair you have, the better you are at um at playing games. Mine's, mine's a DX racer. It's nothing too fancy. I, like I said, I, I'm not really much of a professional myself. So. And then we have another one that says Chain Gabs has its ICO today from Chain Block or Crypto. How important is it that the chain block, uh, the blockchain for the future, the future of gaming? What was that? Sorry. So it says Chain Gabs has its ICO today for the blockchain crypto. How important is the blockchain for the future of gaming? Blockchain for the future of gaming. I'm um, not sure about that one. That's something that sounds like quite a deep question. I'm not entirely that, much. We'll get back to you on that one. We'll figure that. I know someone who might know the answer. Um, what kind of anime do you like? I don't watch any anime, unfortunately. I have watched Attack on Titan. We have lots of the lots of our students do watch anime and esports, though. Oh, yeah, it's um, very popular with esports, especially like there's, there's so many people that, you know, the names and the kind of personas are based around anime they watch. It's it's got, a massive with it. We've got another one here about the environment for doing esports. Would you say it's best to start from your bedroom or do you think you should be better to set up a gaming room within your house? I think that it's it's always good to have a gaming room, especially if, you know, it's something to dedicate, if you want to really dedicate your time to it and you are considering becoming a professional, it's good to kind of have your own separate workplace. Um, you, you kind of don't want to spend all your day at your PC and then just lean back and go to bed. Um, if, if you do want to take it seriously, you should kind of, you know, treat it as a job. But I'm talking this is, you know, kind of down the line when you have really established a career. If you're still playing casually or even semi-competitively, um, don't worry too much about having the best setup or, you know, making your own special like game room or anything like that. Um, you, you can put money into it down the line. You'll see all the professionals and all the streamers have their own office or something like that. So it does come in handy once you're really at that level, but it's not a necessity. Don't worry about, you know, splashing loads of cash on doing that straight away. There's another one here that's a really good question, actually. Can esports be in the Olympics or are there plans for it to be an Olympic sport? So this this has kind of always been a really big question within esports. Um, there is an esports Olympics, um, or at least there's the um, Asia Games in which uh the likes of korea china japan all these countries compete against each other across various titles like league of legends which is a massive one um i think if the the kind of argument is that if there's games like chess which are very mental they're not very physically taxing or you know things like darts which aren't you know it is physical but not necessarily the most physical sport people argue you know esports should be considered um i wouldn't be surprised one day down the line to perhaps see it in there um, however, I do think the, the advantage that esports has and gaming as a whole is it's its whole industry and it does succeed separate from sports. It is esports, 
but it doesn't need sports to be successful. And that's why I think esports can be its own Olympics. You can have an esports Olympics. And I think down the line, it more than likely will be more popular than people watching the regular Olympics. You can see, you know, the more digital world we live in now, especially when things, you know, as a major pandemic have happened, it's only the esports scene's only really shown growth. Um, you know, when the likes of outdoor sports, you know, they don't really succeed in times like this. You know, esports is future proof and it's going to keep growing in the future. So if we are going to see a kind of worldwide Olympics, I'm not sure if it'll be the Olympics, but we will 100% see something, you know, of that scale in esports in the future. I think you're on mute there, Amy. Sorry. All right. That's my fault. My bad. <laughs> what are the mental health implications of a career in esports and what protections do young people have of getting into such a career? That's, that's a really good question, actually, because, you know, mental health is, is always a really important thing to consider. And as an organisation under myself, we always need to check in with our players and make sure that everything is, you know, they're working in a safe environment, a protected environment, and most of all, they feel comfortable. Um, so in esports, I would say there is a lot to do with mental health and physical health. Um, you know, both go hand in hand very nicely. And the top organisations do employ people um who you know kind of uh try to think of the correct words you know people who deal with like physical health mental health you know they'll they'll talk, have one-on-ones with players um players will be able to give open feedback and that's kind of keeping an open door policy with everyone letting people be fully aware they can talk to you as an owner at any time um as an individual it's a really important you know if you are going to try to become a professional or get involved not to burn yourself out you know you've got to take it slow it's it's although it, you, it may be your passion and you love it it is a job at the end of the day uh, you need to give yourself time get yourself a break and although people only really consider the physical aspect of it getting away from the computer getting outside is very good for you know your mental health as well um and you know th- there can be cases where you know there's toxic players or a toxic game or toxic environment um people do what they can organizations do what they can um, the game producers do what they can to kind of get rid of that uh, toxic aspect but the most important thing to do is get away every now and then from from your computer especially um, when you're feeling a bit overworked or you, you've spent too much time because it can burn you out quite quickly um, but the, there are people especially in the top tier organizations who've considered that that you can talk to and get advice from there's the flip side of this we've been asked another question and i know that there's completely the shift of the flip side of this mm-hmm. how can esports benefit your mental health now i know that this is this this actually there are benefits massive benefits aren't there oh yeah definitely i mean first of all you know the the, the most important thing that has come from my journey into esports has definitely been building the community and being a part of a great community of people just like yourself um everyone is really desperate to kind of you know make it big and um get started earning money but you know most it's i've went from having most of my friends local to most of my friends online um and there's there's much more aspects of mental health than just having friends but it's it's so great to have people there who are supportive and are completely on the same page want to do exactly the same thing that you want to do so that is one just great benefit the other benefit you know it's you keep yourself and your mind your body it stays active you're it's all about reaction times uh learning and you know going over um vods all these type of things memory as well it can really help your memory yeah exactly yeah yeah it's really good like for your brain in general they're they're looking at about the links between saving off like uh, alzheimer's and dementia and using it in dementia patients so Mm -hmm. there are some really strong links to to mental health and they're looking at as well connecting communities together like the lgbt communities so that they've got Mm -hmm. you know especially in rural areas there are lots of benefits we've got a really good question here um, could you recommend any websites that advertise for professional gaming jobs? I think that's gaming jobs in general. I don't think it's just for, for you know, just to be the professional gamer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, there's a really good one that's actually based locally near me in Newcastle, which is Hit Marker Jobs. Um, they're they're a good site in the sense that they have a lot of full time jobs where you know they, they do look for some more experienced people um but there is a lot of volunteer work and a lot of the grassroots organizations will look for people with little experience who are just hungry to get involved and want to volunteer um something i was going to go on about was just kind of um how you can 
the, the best way to probably get involved with little experience is to volunteer and kind of take on these um, volunteer roles. If, if you're passionate and passionate enough, say, you know, you use TikTok and you love Fortnite, you can start, you know, say, look, I'll, I'll, I'll be a TikTok manager. I'll post regular Fortnite clips and owners and organizations need that. You know, it's, it's actually really important at the moment. Um, so hit marker jobs advertise a lot of things like that. Um, in general, looking how to get involved in the different careers. Um, the British Esports Organization have a list of different careers on their website. Um, but if you are looking for actual jobs to apply for, I'd say hit marker jobs is probably the most well-known in the UK. There's so many questions on here, especially about what equipment do you have and, and uh, <laughs> what devices do you play on? It's pretty inclusive and I don't think we should get personal about whose computer is bigger than whose. We're not going to go there. But there's a really good question here that says, how important is diet and esports performance and sort of and what's the perfect diet for, for esports? Because obviously diet and nutrition does play a part, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And it was like I was saying earlier with those you do have nutritionists and um people who are really focused around players' physical well-being, especially at that top level. Um, you'll find that most pro organizations actually have an in-house chef um who will work on players diet and give them you know really high quality meals which are proven to be beneficial to their body and mind um i do think it is important at ma maintaining that peak level it's always important to keep like a good diet because it, it does help your physical performance just as much as you know being tired does um having a good diet helps keep you you know alert energetic and help reaction times it is important when competing professionally 100 percent. and also if you are someone who spends a lot of time in front of the computer like like i do myself um it's important to stay fit as well so i say it is important and it is definitely something that pro organizations place very very high importance on there's a, a couple of questions here um i think you said what games you play but they're asking what is your favorite game that you do play my personal favorite game is Apex because um, I compete semi-professionally as well. Um, but that is a game that we've had the most success in. We've we've earned. There's a lot of people trying it. to one v one you. I'm just trying to put that out there. That that's <laughs> not say, right I'm, now. I, I'm They're not... wanting to know if you're console or PC because where a lot of us are console at, at West Suffolk, where a lot of us are Xbox. What what are you rocking at the moment in that sense? PC at the moment. Um, I have a Nintendo Switch. That's probably the most I've got to console. But I did start with console. It yeah. was just the, the games I got involved in, like League of Legends, are PC based. Um, mm. And a lot of the people who compete do compete on PC. Um, but a lot of the games are cross platform now. So even, yeah. you know, they, they can't compete together anyway. But personally, I play on PC. We've got, we've got one here that I might throw to you and then throw back to myself. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the most important skill in esports? Most important skill in esports. Um, it, it, I would say it really depends. It's a very broad question. Um, it, it depends on what profession you're going for. Um, I, I would say a lot of the time it kind of applies to both being a player and working in the industry is communication. Um, communication between players when you're playing in a game is, is really important, especially in team games, you know, and it, it goes well above and beyond just being in the game. You've got to have the right call outs, the right communication, but also, of course, um, outside of the game, maintaining relationships uh, when applying for jobs, good communication between um, organization owners, uh, between, you know, people hiring for jobs, between friends. Um, it's always something really important. But, you know, th th there's so many important yeah, skills. But... There is loads of important skills, but I would pro I'm probably going to like. So from what you said, definitely. But I go with collaboration, being able mm -hmm. to work with others. Being a team player, no matter what your role is, from the little role to a big role, um, even if there's no role too small, you know, to be able to collaborate and knowing when to compromise is a very good skill. Because there are times where you have to compromise. So it can't, it's all right. It's a bit like football. The, the team doesn't work with, with uh, 11 strikers. Um, someone asking if you play Call of Duty um not so much anymore i play the zombies mode on call of duty i enjoy that with some friends but in, in terms of like trying the multiplayer it's not not so much my thing anymore we've got then we've got a good question that says um how much do you think you should spend on a good gaming computer good ram etc for being able to do professional gaming and what advice would you give for being able to participate in tournaments independently uh, I recently just built my own computer not too long ago. Um, that was quite an expensive one because it's all, you know, brand new um, 
brand new parts and very top of the range but that's because you know it's my passion i've i've put a lot of money into it um you, you can get a decent game pc for something around 500 pounds i'd say um if you want the top top end one it's probably going about 2000 i know it's like really expensive but like i said you can get one second hand that'll run games perfectly fine um the thing about a gaming pc is that it's much more than just a console it's it's you know you can do your work on it as well um videos um meetings etc um so it, it's important to remember you're not paying just for something to compete on it it should be something that's a big investment um but like i said you can you can get one that'll run games perfectly fine at around 500 pounds but uh if you are really serious about it you can they, they do range a great amount about a thousand i would say it's about the average uh what was the second part of the question sorry oh well let's have a look sorry that was my bad. I got carried away with the computer. Uh, no, no, it's all right. I'm trying to dismiss some where they like they proper want a one v one you. You know, it's that it's understandable gamer thing that happens. Oh, I'm pretty tired. Um, and what advice would you give someone for being able to participate when you're an independent? So, like when you're like in tournaments and it's just you, you're just sort of starting out. Um, well, it depends on the game, I'd say. Um, there are, there are a lot of games that will be only kind of three v three, five v five, and in that case, you would be paired against people. Um, I'd say as long as you're comfortable competing by yourself, you know, you can get into these games with people that you don't necessarily know. Uh, again, if you've got that good communication, it's always a good sign. But there are a lot of kind of one v one tournaments and solo tournaments. Um, if you look at the likes of Challenger mode, um, they'll always have uh individual tournaments going even if it's for you know multiplayer games like rocket league um i had a player we're doing one at the at the moment now that is a 1v1 rocket league tournament um so they are out there it's just a bit more niche than uh yeah. original uh team games uh, i like rocket league it's the one that i can play league of legends mm. is not for me I yeah there's a lot going on in league I got past the training set yeah I, i've <laughs> tried and tried i just can't get my head around that one i'm done definitely eight not- years of it it's <laughs> Um, we have someone here who says they'd like to know how many kills you have on Apex and that they're saying they have 790. There's a lot of people asking, like, what kind of swagger you reckon? Um, but we'll go for a more sensible question of where can you sign up for esports and what requirements are they needed to get started? This might be a West Suffolk College question. Um, you can sign up on our website for the esports uh, courses that we have. Um, we also have our own in-house league, so West Suffolk League. So if you're already a West Suffolk student, you can join the league with us. It doesn't matter if you're on the eSports course or a sports course or any other course across college. You're more than welcome to join us in our eSports. Um, they're on Wednesdays. Uh, what devices are included in eSports? So I think that's talk. That's maybe someone asking about across platforms and, and the different kinds of platforms that there are. Yeah, well, I'm, well, what do you know? PC, you know, Xbox, PS4. Those are the, uh, or PS5 even now. Um, those are the, the three main most common ones. Uh, sometimes you can actually, no, sorry, the prob- the most common one is probably actually your phone. Uh, if you look at the likes of PUBG Mobile and these kind of uh, just like Clash of Clans, these kind of games, they are massive, not so much in the West, but in the East. They are absolutely massive. And there's so, so many people that play these games and so much money in it. Um, so probably the phone's actually the biggest kind of, console or at least something that you use to compete uh but the, the main three are pc uh playstation xbox uh switch to a small extent but that's your big three but like i said the phone and mobile gaming in general is starting to adapt more of an esports scene so since it's so common that that is really starting to take off yeah um can i learn to be a formula one driver doing esports hmm <laughs> yeah, actually... this is one where i know that recently formula one when we went into lockdown they started using some of the Formula One driving games to practice. Yeah. And when they went up against the esports guys, they were very nift and said some naughty language and got banned from the league because <laughs> actually they were beaten by the esports guys. So I think this is an avenue that Formula One are now developing quite a lot mm-hmm. because they got absolutely trashed by the esports <laughs> lot. So I mean... I'd say that that is definitely something that you might be able, it, that's something you want to look into and see if it's developing because there was a lot, if you look about F1 in lockdown, that's how they did keep practicing. So it's definitely an area to look into. The level um, of realism in those games is really extraordinary. Like it's so well made. And then people, you know, go full out and get the whole steering wheel, pedals, everything. They get a proper racing chair, not like the one I've got. And um, y- y- I mean, you watch it and it's even hard to tell sometimes that it's not actual Formula One. It's it's so realistic. Um, 
but I don't think it'll necessarily make you a Formula One driver, but it will definitely give you an advantage over someone who hasn't. Yeah. And then we've got one last one of um so it's someone looking about how they get good at FPS games and any other games. So I suppose it's how do you take a game you like and get good at a game? Well, the biggest one I would say is definitely practice and just repetition. You probably already knew that. It's just playing the game as much as you can. Um, but what a lot of people do kind of when they reach their their peak and want to do more, especially from players we've had previously, um, it's recording the games, going back over them and looking for mistakes. A lot of the time when you are in a game, you can't necessarily process what's going on because you're so focused on what's happening right now. You don't necessarily look at it from a different perspective when you're not actually playing and you can look at the video yourself it's a lot easier to spot mistakes it's about learning from those mistakes and improving um organizations will have coaches and analysts who can help you with that and i'm sure in general there are a lot of coaches and people who are willing to give advice um as i said with the college they, they do have coaches themselves and and you know there are people there who are professionals at improving um player ability so it, it goes beyond just playing. It's about self-reflection and improving from uh, just general mistakes. The more mistakes you have, the more it's easier it is to point out, the quicker you can fix them. I would, I would just add to that time management as well. Time management as a skill as a player, managing your time well yeah. and uh, being disciplined. Discipline is a big part of it. It's not just something you wake up at 11 o'clock, think you'll have a couple of games, have a kip and then go back to bed. It mm-hmm. it's, takes true discipline. It's the same as any other sport. You need to be committed. You need to have discipline. It's got a lot of rigor with it. The other thing is we've got another question here and it might be our last question. Is it what is the biggest game at the moment? And if you had to predict what's going to be the next best, next big thing, what would you say that would be? Hmm. I mean, League of Legends has always kind of been the biggest game in terms of player base to kind of esports. Um the if, if we're talking big in terms of the money and the viewership, I probably would say League of Legends. They have big partners like um, BMW, Mercedes-Benz, KitKat. <laughs> there's a lot of, a lot of money. as well, in. isn't it? There's yeah, yeah. The, people. Yeah, exactly. They actually there's, do there's... In, in-game promotion. We've just been look, looking at that on the West Suffolk course about how many of these brands, because yeah. even um, DHL are one of their sponsors and they had little robots and everything in League of Legends as well. So it's... There's a lot of, they see the promotion within the game as well as mm-hmm. outside the game. Yeah, I mean, League is just massive for that. It is pretty much, you know, the place to be with all these brands wanting to get, like, a part. It, it, it is very much creating superstars, people who are earning this mad amounts of money. So I'd say League's kind of the biggest eSport. Um, you do look at the likes of Fortnite, which I do think is very big and it's very popular. Um, but but the battle royale esports scene is never really as big as a kind of structured league like League of Legends has or Counter Strike, where they have these kind of regular, like kind of almost like a football league where they compete regularly, and you know it's it's televised, people can tune in. The um, massive, isn't it? The amount of spectators for yeah. esports now, people people actually pay and fill stadiums as big as Wembley to watch these yeah. leagues. So I, saying, I, I think, went there myself for the Wembley yeah. one. It was massive. I think people underestimate how how much and how quick esports has come on because in the last ten years, the the growth in esports is is just astronomical. I mean, there's normally for League of Legends, especially the World Finals, there's normally a couple hundred million, um, and that's before putting China in. When you add China, I think about one point one billion people watched League of Legends, which is a seventh of the world. Um, and that was for the final more than the Olympics. Yeah. Yeah. It it was, it was even just the league of legends, European finals. I'm pretty sure had more than the, um, uh, I forgot the name for it, but it's the, it's like the basketball playoffs in America, which is obviously a massive thing in America. I forgot the actual name for it, but, um, like they're playing like Madison square garden, et cetera. You know, it's, it is very much treated like a, like a big sport and in general viewership, it does get more just because there's so many esports fans now and so many people interested in games and they just want to push you to answer the question of what everybody does and it's the first question you always get asked and the last question do you prefer xbox or ps4 <laughs> uh, it always happens doesn't it um, uh, apologies but they're very pressing on this I, I, I don't want to kind of chicken out and say i play a pc um i mean i, I think they want you to pick i'd say <laughs> xbox because i grew up on xbox yeah me too so, yeah i mean that's but, it i mean 
I have We've a PS4 some very now, unusual but... questions. I'll just put I'm that out there. That, that, that comes through. with esports, so... Um, I'm just making sure I haven't missed any. Um, we've answered a lot of questions. I'm sure I've alienated a lot of people now that have said Xbox No, well. they wouldn't worry about it. Some of them <laughs> have been very unusual questions. Let's PC is still number one in my book. Yeah, well, actually, PC gives you a lot of... Uh, the reason why, though, I suppose if you had to explain that to people just coming to the sport... The reason PC is so popular is because it's so adaptable and you can make small changes very quickly yeah. for a low cost. Whereas with some of the big consoles, you're paying a lot of the money for all their peripherals, whereas PC is much more adaptable, isn't it? Yeah, you can upgrade bit by bit with the PC. I mean, I'm, I'm expecting this to last 10 years, maybe changing out one or two things. So it is an investment, but it's it's there. And then if you like another part I didn't really touch on much was streaming. Um, if you're good enough at a game, people will watch your stream. You can share it with friends and family. You can earn money from that. Uh, like I said, like we've like got that quite a lot of streamers at, at college that are making money off streaming. Yeah, streaming it, what they're doing. It's very easy to do on a computer, and it's very easy to add, you know, good production. Like people who are interested in broadcasting and production, you know, you can do professional streams. You can you can even you know work as a, a stream producer for um, top talent and top players. So uh, streaming is a very very big thing, and just casual casual hours watched on on streams is massive. So that's another great well, thing about PC recommend esports for is if say you're not sure what career you would like next but you're interested in gaming computer science even uh, broadcasting journalism streaming all of that kind of area coming and doing a course at West Norfolk we're one of the only colleges in the area like well there's only about five or six colleges offering a level three in esports at the moment and a lot of them are based around um either the sport side of it or the business side of it mm -hmm. we're, we're based around the gaming and the computer side of it so we're quite unique so in that sense, you might have to come and have a look when we're out of lockdown. You'll have to come and give us give us what you think. We'd love to do that. I mean, come and give some I, that's talks ideal. to some of our students in person when we go out of lockdown. I'd love to do game and workshops, just unfortunately oh, it's not. Yeah, so we'll bite your hand off. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> not a problem. But um, yeah, I think that's everything now. I think Maddie's there to come back in, isn't it? Mm. There. And like I said, there's there's so many questions to answer about esports. So you know, like I'm more than happy to even have to answer any questions because it is still very much you know it's a blooming industry. It's it's not quite reached its peak or anything. And I don't think we'll find. Oh, a long, we're nowhere long time. near the peak yet. Yeah, it, exactly. It, gonna, at some point, we're gonna hit. It'll be. Mm -hmm. The more people will get educated. It's already household. Yeah. It's just the matter of the level of household, like how. You know, mums and grannies will be doing it soon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. I'm, I'm just trying to get them. I get people dragged involved. into it all the time. I'm just a bit rubbish at some of them. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure like the next generation, it'll, it's probably going to be more well known. Absolutely else. smashes me at Fortnite. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to. He's only seven. You've got to think there's a generation that have been playing since they're quite young. I'm sure there was an eight year old Fortnite player that was signed professionally to an organization with a salary. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, my know, son's it, not doing that. We're not going to suggest that. No, but no. he started off with Minecraft, you see. That's how he started. And we had yeah. to find something a bit more. Mm -hmm. And then he goes back to, but he plays, he's not, he's not playing Fortnite in the same way as some people. Yeah, yeah. Or making worlds and exploring mm -hmm. more of a, there's lots to it, isn't there? I yeah, don't know yeah. what's happened to Maddie. That's a great thing about, you know, you, you can compete professionally, but, you know, it's also, it's a hobby at the end of the day you can use to chill and relax so it's another thing like i said about downtime just you know play play compete if you want you know, try as hard as you want to become professional but take time for yourself to remember you know it's game and it's a hobby at the end of the day uh there's other games you can play with friends just to chill out right i'm gonna thank you sam um for everything and for the for the for the chat stay in touch and mm -hmm. uh we'll contact you you can contact us and we'll 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 share some, some details after this um but I think we have to leave for the stream to close down. But I've seen you on LinkedIn, if you know, so I'll, I'll pop your message across. That's great. All right. Thank you very much thanks for having for me. Coming. Um, thanks for sharing your knowledge with us. It's really appreciated, especially as it's something that we're trying to grow at West Suffolk. So we mm -hmm. really appreciate the time you spent with us this afternoon. So thank you. And uh, uh, if you look back through the questions, enjoy some of them. They're uh, <laughs> I'm sure I will. Delightful. <laughs> <laughs> but take care and thanks for all your help this afternoon thank you sam great thank you very much cheers